and welcome to the Premier Property Show. Today, the show is packed with untapped opportunities available in the circle movement, interior decor ideas, expert insights, and much, much more. Our property pick of the week highlights projects by Sarkos, an industry player changing the property landscape. The accessory spot brings the glam world of coffee tables. Later on, we catch up with the homeowner with an interesting take on borrowing and mortgages. My process to get a mortgage for the land that, you know, I bought now um, was incredible. I mean, it took us about seven months to close that. Lastly, whether you're looking to get onto the property ladder or investments and be a step ahead, the property gallery brings just that. So sit back and get inspired. As always, there is something for everyone. On our property pick of the week, let's take a house hunting tour without leaving your space on projects developed by Sarkos. We kick off with Crystal Rivers, a master plant community bringing comfort, luxury, and a buzz filled life. This iconic development is attracting everyone from first time home buyers, investors, to key retailers in the country. Driven by its strategic location in Athi River and easy access to the highway, let's see what they have to offer. Located only 25 kilometers from Nairobi CBD on the Mombasa Duo carriageway and only a 10 minute drive away from the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Crystal Rivers is the ideal living space for you and your family. Integral parts of the Crystal Rivers experience is realizing your home ownership dream right at the edge of the city. Here you choose between three and four bedroom townhouses or the well-designed three bedroom apartments. Crystal Rivers give you the luxury of living close to all amenities in a far from ordinary location. Accommodation for three and four bedroom townhouses includes private garden, spacious lounge area, Kitchen opens to the dining area, all bedrooms are ensuite with walk-in shower, working spaces, DSQ accessible from outside, and master ensuite with two wardrobes and bathtub. Salient features include stone wall topped with electric and razor wire, CCTV cameras, common gate, carport for two cars, independent access to the mall, swimming pool, gym, jogging track, backup generator for common areas, solar water heating, well manicured gardens, biodigester and riverfront views. We caught up with Java House the Nairobi Hospital, and Naivas, who are opening shop at Crystal Rivers. Let's hear more. Uh, 
Crystal Rivers Mall ushers you into a world of unsurpassed retail variety and quality. With three levels of premium shopping experience, the mall is home to more than 100 local and international stores. The bustling mall is the heart of the unique Crystal Rivers experience and set to be the destination to be and be seen at. The mall has been designed with security in mind and offers three secured entrances onto the main retail level with parking for over 700 vehicles on the lower ground level and upper ground parking deck. Get ready to shop, dine, work and play. Thank you so much for having us here. Give us an overview of the Nairobi Hospital brand. Uh, the Nairobi Hospital is uh, very, very well known in, in the region, having started out in the mid-50s uh, as a European-only hospital. But over time, it's uh, taken a place as being the premier uh, healthcare institution. And when I say that, not only in Kenya, but we talk about East Africa, even to Central Africa, and within the other regions. So they come here for treatment? Yes, people, we we're, we're say we're the preferred uh, center for uh, treatment and care in this region. Traditionally, we know that you have been in very high-end areas. This where we are is Upper Hill, you're in Gigiri, and of course you're in Karen. And with the rising population, we then know that you're looking at going to the outskirts. What's really driving that? I think it's uh, the uh, board and management uh, recognize um, the changing uh, demographics and population shifts within Nairobi in that uh, people aren't really necessarily settled in certain urban areas. People are moving and living where they can buy property and land. So having realized that, you realize that uh, as a central location in Upper Hill, we are limiting our reach to our customers in terms of uh, traffic, in terms of where they live, and with our two centers that we have at Warwick and Galeria, we've actually realized that we can actually grow our customer base. Our customers are happy they can reach us quicker. So our intention is actually to have maybe within the next uh, eight or so months, five more of these centers well distributed within Nairobi. So I know your first stop is Crystal Rivers. Uh, yes, um, we're looking at Crystal Rivers in Earth River because of, um, of several things that are happening. Um, you can see through the traffic, through the construction, a lot of people are living in the Kitengela at the river. And then there's new roads coming up, which is going to extend the Nairobi suburbs all the way to Machakos. So if you look at it within the short term and the long term when the mall is ready, well, that should be the best place to be because it's a long way off from where we are in Nairobi Hospital. Of course, we know that uh, quality healthcare is rare, especially in those areas. What services should I be looking at if I go to Crystal Rivers, as opposed to coming all the way to Nairobi Hospital, where I am? Uh, with these centres that we are opening, the whole idea is actually that we are much more accessible in terms of uh, if you have an incident, like um, I have a cough now and everything like that, it's easy for you to be treated in that particular center and traveling over the narrow belt. In the case that you also have a heart attack, yeah, you normally need to be within a good center in the first half hour. Mm -hmm. So those centers will be fully staffed with doctors, nurses, we'll have x-ray, ultrasound, laboratory equipment that we're able to treat you. Will I be able to get a mini surgery? Will I be able to be admitted through there? Will you have beds in those centres? Um, the, the big difference, those are not hospitals, mm -hmm. they're outpatient centres. Okay. So limited opening hours, initially okay. from 8 till 8 p.m., okay. uh, depending on the demand. But you should be able to, what we call in our language, for patients who are walking mm -hmm. and moving, and should be able to treat you, mm -hmm. go home. Mm -hmm. If you're very sick, then we can actually transfer you. So you offer ambulance services as well? Definitely. Today we are talking about Crystal Rivers, one of the biggest and best malls that is coming up. What made you pick that location? 
Well, I think for Crystal Rivers, it's one of the most uh, strategically located mall. It's uh, in a location between Nairobi and Machakos at the river. If you look at the catchment, uh, we've done our research, about 35% are homeowners, which means more disposable income in that area. And there's more room, more room for, you know, for growth. And uh, if, if, if you look at uh, how things are going, that will be the bedroom of Nairobi. So, and you know, with, the, with, with also the, the expansion of Mombasa Road, it's going to open up the two towns, the Machakos and other satellite towns in between. And that uh, is the main reason as to why we moved to Crystal Rivers. What should we expect at Crystal Rivers? Expect a food market whereby you can come in, pick your fish, take it to the deli, give instructions on how it's, we want it to be cooked, go to the, you know, the vegetable area, pick some fruits, go to the juice section, say these are, I want my juice made. That is the kind of revolution we are bringing into retail. What drives Naivas on picking the right location? I know that so many developers who are watching us, many of them wonder, if I put up a commercial space, how can I attract Naivas? And what does it take for Naivas to occupy such spaces? For us, before we open a store, there's a lot of research that uh, goes into it. We, 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 we mostly want to understand the catchment. How is the catchment? How are the people there? How is the disposable income? That is key to us. The, the second thing is accessibility. Is the site accessible? And how will it, how will it evolve in future? For instance, we are seeing you know, sites being put off by infrastructure. So we, are, we want to see how will that site uh, you know, work for us in the future. We are also looking at the rent because uh, nowadays you know, the rent is too high. We, there are some uh, you know, malls that we have not gone into because, purely because of the rent or not, and all that. So those are some, some of the basic key elements that we look at. A lot of Kenyans, when we visit Naivas, we tend to feel like you're more affordable. Yet when we come to this store, I suppose this is your latest store, it's so well done, you've gone a notch higher. Should we expect you to be more expensive or will you remain affordable to the Kenyan markets? I think that's a promise uh, we've always kept from the word go. We'll always be affordable and that comes because we, we are more efficient. Actually, we just received an accolade from uh, Unilever Kenya Limited of being the most efficient uh, supermarket in the country. So in terms of pricing, in terms of quality, in terms of variety, we'll never compromise on that and we'll always be the leading. I know that the retail market currently is going through its own ups and downs. How do you see it unfold? Well, there will be a lot of changes in the market, uh, and especially with the entrance of the multinational companies. We expect both tactical and strategic uh, changes uh, within, uh, within, uh, within the industry. For instance, we don't expect to see you know, huge stores or people open so many stores uh, like we've been seen uh, uh, previously. People will be more strategic on going to the right, uh, 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 right uh, locations and you know where that uh, and making sure that their businesses are making money currently i think people are just rushing up and down opening stores so there, there will be a lot of changes do you see the international players coming in and eroding who you are we, we don't see that uh, we are well prepared uh, for us as a business uh, what we've done is that we've been very strategic uh, in terms of how we run uh, as a company uh, before we open a store uh, we must you know make sure that we do a, a whole lot of market research and ensure that the location that we are opening is a prime location and the store will make money. And we also do follow-ups and make sure that the stores that we've opened are making money for us. We don't count growth as opening more stores. We count growth as, you know, looking at the like for like, are those stores making money for you? If a store is not making money, we, we don't shy. We can even shut it down. Wow. Currently, we are at uh, 41 stores and uh, we are operating in uh, 14 counties. Uh, for neighbors, I would say we are standing on a very strong foundation, which is anchored on four pillars. Uh, one of them is people, uh, systems, product, customer relations, and supplier relations, including creditors. When I say people, I mean uh, the wonderful ladies and gentlemen who are serving us here. I mean, we are a one family, and uh, this company will not be here if it were not for these people. These are our greatest assets and we vary them so much. Uh, for instance, we've created a family uh, of, of people whereby whenever they want to see us to come into our offices for the senior uh, you know, management, we, we, we operate on an open door policy. 
they can come in even without going to the reception. We sit down, discuss, and I believe that this is where we, we, we derive our biggest uh, strength. Uh, the second item is on uh, systems. Systems, is, it's not about you know, the operating systems that we have, the POS and all that. Systems is about uh, processes. It's about people having the right people and being able to integrate uh, those processes and people together. And that can only happen if you have a very strong corporate governance. And uh, that's what uh, we as our neighbors are proud of, uh, of having. The retail market may be grappling with challenges, but we see light at the end of the tunnel beckoning. Let's talk about Java and your expansion program. Yes. Um, so yeah, we are definitely in an expansion mode. We have been pretty aggressively for the past couple of years, mm -hmm. and we just continue to look to bring Java closer to our customer base, our consumers. I know that you're on your way to your next stop, which is Crystal Rivers. Yes. Why did you choose Crystal Rivers? What was the driving factor? Uh, Crystal Rivers is a good opportunity for us to expand our brand. Um, we have a pretty high concentration of branches in Nairobi, including seven. Um, I'm working on the eighth in CBD, and you've seen us move into areas, especially residential areas, um, that our customers are, are moving to. So I think uh, Crystal Rivers is along one of those arteries where it's, it's on Mombasa Road, which is a major road. Um, it's also, um, if you look at the residential areas, just expanding along Arte River into Kitegela, it's a really interesting dynamic area and so With a the very mall, heavy population. Very heavy population. Yeah. So it's very well positioned um, to meet our, our consumers and a lot of you see that area um, getting back into town especially on the weekends can be challenging with traffic so we want to be very conveniently placed for those consumers. And so we'll see you at Crystal Rivers. Where else will we be seeing uh, your Java brand across okay. the country? Yeah across the country um, actually working on two sites now one in uh, Eldoret which is very prime for Java or also going to Caricho. Mm -hmm. Um, I have plans for Thika mm -hmm. town and also all the way up to Meru. So, really? um, yeah, so we, we, we're targeting quite a few satellite cities uh, around, in and around the area. What sets Java apart hmm. and why should I choose Java as my eating joint? Java, we, we pride ourselves on a number of things. Um, primarily, we're a coffee house, so uh, we believe we serve the best coffee. Uh, and uh, coffee has become, we've helped set that uh, culture in Kenya. We weren't previously, I think 10, 20 years ago, not many people drinking coffee. So um, first and foremost, our coffee and our food offerings. We have a pretty wide variety of uh, food offerings. But I think a lot of times it's consumers decide why they want to go to Java. So a lot of meetings happen there. Um, a lot of first dates happen there. Um, it's a very convenient meeting place that has a good food offering. So everyone can kind of get something that they want. Um, it's a very energetic environment and uh, people honestly just reinforce what we're doing by, by constantly meeting there and eating there with friends, with colleagues, with family. I think we keep going back to a word called value. What value do you get? You know, Kenyans want uh, good value for money, good value for time. And when you go to a Java, um, people are often surprised by our portion size. I mean, if you order a samosa, you might not be able to finish it. So um, definitely portions are big for us. We are very, I would say, conservative or cautious about our prices. You know, uh, we have to, of course, account for inflation and other things, but we are pretty, we want to keep our prices affordable. Um, and uh, we also, yeah, try to be in convenient locations um, and keep a brand standard that's high and consistent across our branches because now um, as of uh, last month we hit 50 across the region 
Whoa. So now we have uh, we're across the region. Yeah. So you're in uh, you're in Rwanda as well. Yes, we have a branch in Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya right now, and we're still exploring out you know the region and across sub-Saharan. But yeah, we're in three countries and uh, 50 branches across each. Next, another interesting project built with the family in mind. These apartments are functional, simple, with modern living styles, Bluebells Gardens. Bluebells Gardens Apartments are located 500 meters off Mombasa Road along Beijing Road, Nairobi. They comprise of 300 units of 80 two-bedroom units and 223 bedroom units. Accommodations include spacious lounge area, sizable guest room, sizable kitchen with fitted cabinetry and a yard area, spacious bedrooms with inbuilt wardrobes, spacious balcony, spacious master bedroom ensuite, large windows to allow in natural light and landscape gardens. Amenities include electric fence and a high perimeter security wall, internet and cable TV ready, borehole and an elevated water storage tank, city council water available, instant hot water, solar street lighting and carbo paved driveways. See Rwaka Ridge Apartments, a tastefully designed project with a friendly payment plan. This gem guarantees value for money. Ruaka Ridge is located off Limuru Road, 3 kilometers from Ruaka Town. The apartments are 200 meters from the Limuru Road. Ruaka Ridge development comprising of exquisite two-bedroom apartments with a serene atmosphere in a well-secured gated community of 54 units. The development is within close proximity to social amenities such as Two Rivers Mall, which is the largest mall in East and Central Africa, Roslyn Riviera Mall, Quick Mutt Supermarket, Roslyn Academy, Jollyland School, Rosa Joy Academy, among others. Major banks are all within 10 minutes from Ruaka Ridge. Accommodation includes spacious lounge leading to well-lit balcony, well-designed and fitted kitchen with pantry which opens to adobe area, master bedroom ensuite with spacious fitted wardrobes, vast balcony with magnificent views, separate bathroom and toilet. Salient features include ample cover paved parking, street lighting, security cameras and electric fence, 24-hour security guard at the gate, borehole and council water on site. movement does not need any introduction. Most of us have benefited in one way or another. Let's get insights on how the movement continues to change our day-to-day -day lives. Advantages of being in a circle one, you you get real-time information of properties that you're looking for. You don't only save money or put your money there, you also get value for your money. For example, the share trading part. So if I save with a circle, for example, which is not the same case as a bank, I can be able to, at the end of the year, earn dividends of what I've saved. 
I can get loans random. I can wake up to a, to my circle today and two weeks later I have loans, you know, basing on the relationship we've had with them. And at the same time, the, the interest rate is affordable. I would tend to think circles is more reliable or cooperatives are more reliable to work with as far as financial support is required compared to working with a bank. Another advantage of being in a circle is you never peg any, any, any amount on learning. So there's constant education and then there's uh, savings. You end up saving, which is improving a lot, a lot of lives around as we've seen. Now factors you should consider when choosing a, a, a partner, for example, cooperative or a circle, to work with one, stability. You know, can you can you trust the financial stability of this of this circle or this cooperative? At the end of the day, you don't want to buy property and then you start stressing about I never got my title or blah 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 because of something that went wrong because of the lack of stability. Secondly, trustworthiness. Can you trust this partner you're working with? Are they reliable people? That's another point. At the same time, uh, how long have they been in the industry? You know, the, I could wake up today and I start selling property to you and I don't really understand the dynamics of the industry, but having a few years of experience in the same gets you some advantage as far as investment is concerned. Also, um, the expertise, you know. You don't want to work with a partner who would randomly send you product, which at the end of the day, you don't get any value from. Working with, us, with someone who understands the needs that you're looking for, they can tailor make all the solutions they're looking for you. At the property show, we understand the industry and are best positioned to uncover hidden opportunities. If you're looking for just anything in this sector, visit our offices and let's talk. This conversation continues on our social media platforms. We are taking a short break. Still ahead, the glam world of coffee tables and the dangers of borrowing at the expense of your home. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back. Next, the glam world of coffee table ideas. Coffee tables have become a must-have in modern 21st century homes. It is a place to set drinks, stash magazines, organize remotes or display fan decor. If you're wondering where to begin, let's break it down to size, shape, material and design. Size should always come first. You'll want to ensure it fits your space perfectly. With a large seating arrangement, a big coffee table, or a pair of matching tables, keep focus off one large piece of furniture and allow your eyes to move around the room with ease. It's recommended pay attention to scale and avoid extremes such as too big or too small in comparison to other furniture sets in the home. Secondly, shape plays a major role in the overall look and feel. A round shape encourages guests to gather around, while a square table works well in unifying different seating arrangements. On the other hand, you can also use unique coffee tables with lift tops for additional storage. Design is all about personality and personal preferences. You may go for rustic, vintage, or just plain color. A stylish ottoman can also serve as a coffee table. <music> Lastly, coffee tables should be easy to clean, durable, and suitable for all family members. As we finish today's interior decor chapter, it is said a house is an empty shell, but a home is where we like to be. It is cozy, classy, and above all, connects the family. 
If you're looking to groom your space, just call on us and we'll connect you with professionals. Next, a home ownership experience that will put you on the edge of your couch. Today, I'm knocking on another door. Come with me. Once again, thank you so much for having us and what a pleasure seeing you again. Karibu. And who is Mary? Mary is, um, depending on the season in her life, is a very different person, but I think at the core she remains pretty much the same. Um, I'm a lawyer. I think even my teachers knew from a long time, you know, because I'm always talking and making a lot of noise and arguing about everything. So first and foremost, I think I'm a lawyer. I'm a mother to two daughters, 12 and 9, um, lovely girls. Um, I'm an auntie, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, um, I'm all of those things and, you know, and a friend, yes. Let's talk about your profession. What exactly do you do as a lawyer? That's an interesting question because um, today I try and explain to people that I'm a lawyer and I don't go to court and they just can't seem to understand, you know, to merge the two. For the longest time, Wakili was, you know, that person with a briefcase, you know, with your files and your gown and your wig, the Saiso wig, town. walking in town. Uh, but uh, I'm a corporate and commercial lawyer. I don't go to court. I always like to clarify that. I don't do any litigation. I specialize um, in key sectors, um, infrastructure, energy, um, you know, ICT, real estate. And the bulk of our work is really just commercial work. It's the, you know, the contractual work, um, as people say, very boring stuff. But, you know, it, we push paper, where the paper pushes. In other jurisdictions, um, South Africa, for instance, we are attorneys. And um, in the UK, would be solicitors. So, but we don't have the distinction here yet. But, um, but that's what I've chosen to be. Are you enjoying your profession and what makes it kick? <laughs> I am enjoying it, for sure. I think there was a time I like to call myself a reformed lawyer, meaning that I am not actually practicing and I'm not in the legal profession, but that's because I hadn't gotten this thing in my head that you can actually be a lawyer without necessarily, you know, being the being in court and your lord and my, you know, your worship, all of those things. I'm not sure how it works. Um, but I'm enjoying it um, primarily because it involves um, solving problems that are current. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, um, putting homes in people's, you know, in, within people's reach. We are talking about um, electrifying the continent. We're talking about building roads, you know, stuff that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, somebody needs to push the paper to make sure that those transactions happen. And I'm enjoying it. Home ownership is personal. And many people are pushed to own a home. For some reason, you reach a certain age and you feel this, I must have my home today. Yeah. At what point did you know that this is my time and I and started the journey and mm. how was that journey? Yeah. I was very fortunate. Um, you know, for me, this came at a very early age. I was living in a jurisdiction in South Africa that made it possible for younger people to actually own homes. It was a function of many things. You know, a stable market, um, you know, there were jobs, um, there were, um, you know, an access to credit, you know, as long as you had, a, you know, a, an income, it was possible for you to actually start your home ownership journey at a very early age. So I owned my first two little bed place at about 26, um, going on 27. I was very proud of that little space. We entertained a lot. And what drove me to own a home? I mean, it, um, it actually made more sense to pay a mortgage than to rent. The math didn't, you know, make sense. Um, it was cheaper actually to pay a mortgage, uh, pay towards a mortgage, as opposed to paying rent, um, it, depending on the, you know, area that you wanted, the neighborhood you wanted to live in. So for me, I knew from an early age, I was going to pay towards owning my own place. Coming back to Kenya, I mean, you know, it's been very different. It's and the it's opposite. It's a different ball game. It's a completely different ball game. I mean, you, it's unlikely that you will 
ever get um, to a point where you can have a tenant that will be able to recover the cost of the mortgage that you're paying on that home. You always have you to You always talk with pay that. more in yes. your mortgage as opposed to your rent. So here is the opposite. So it, it's been five years since I came back home and I had promised my children, in five years you will be living in your own home <laughs> and we're still getting there. Um, so it's been a journey. Yes. And what would you say that Kenya we need to adopt to be able to provide easy access to home uh, to people willing to start the home ownership journey or people entering onto the property ladder yeah. as opposed to how it is today? Mm. I mean, some things need to be simplified. For instance, um, you know, right now, um, you know, we're, everybody's talking about the interest rate cap, you know, it's, I don't know why people are talking about 14%, 14% is the maximum. It's actually a certain percentage over the CBR rate. So if that rate is 2%, then, you know, you should be actually getting a mortgage at, you know, 6%. If it is maximum, 10%, 6%. maximum, okay, maximum. But our banks all of a sudden have decided that that is the maximum and so everybody will be at that threshold. What we found, I mean, and what we experienced was very different. Depending on your income, your lifestyle, your, you know, and lifestyle meaning that you're not erratic and drinking all over and spending all your income and, you know, recklessly, depending on your lifestyle, on your income, um, you know, uh, and of course your credit rating, and credit rating is not necessarily the fact that you default, so you, it's not always negative, it was actually positive. You know, um, your ability to pay off your credit card, your, you know, all of these things you actually were able to get, let's say, prime minus X, Y, and Z. So it didn't matter what the cap was or what everyone else was lending at, you were judged as an individual. So you could get a mortgage, some people could be on double digits, and you as an individual, because of who you are and how you're rated, could be on a single digit interest rate. So I remember my first um, home was on a single digit basis, even though you know the interest rate at other places was like 12 or 11%. So it's possible. Our challenge is we're not able to think outside the box. The banks, I'm not going to say <laughs> negative things about them because we, you know, we, we need to them work, we need work with them. them. But someone has to answer the question, why are people building their homes cash, brick by brick, as opposed to getting a mortgage? 22,000 mortgages in a country like this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it's, sense. They've made it impossible. It doesn't even add up. My process to get a mortgage for the land that, you know, I bought now um, was Incredible. I mean, it took us about seven months to close that. It, irrespective of who you are, it took seven months with me going back and forth, with reviewing my own documents, sending comments back myself because I could, and um, I was able to cut costs because you know you're I was the, you're I'm the, a lawyer. You're, you're, you're representing yes. yourself, and I could sit with the branch manager and say I don't accept this clause and I don't know whatever. Da, 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 but very many people cannot do that. So um, we have to think outside the box. We have to think about putting homes in people's hands because it, there's a sense of dignity that comes with that. Mm. A roof over your head, you know. There's a sense of purpose. Um, I, I don't know about your staff, how many actually own a home? Very few. People at 30, yes. 40, they don't own homes. Yes. Something yes. is wrong. Next the property gallery. The Lancet Housing Cooperative Society Limited presents the Lancet Village situated in Katani, Siokimao. It is located near Katani Primary School, Katani Secondary School and Brigida Morello Girls Secondary School. This is an ultra-modern estate encompassing four bedroom missionettes, three bedroom apartments and two bedroom apartments. Accommodation includes entrance porch with a lobby, guest cloakroom, guest bedroom, lounge, spacious kitchen, dining area, laundry or utility area, detached SQ, two bedroom sharing toilet or bathroom, master ensuite bedroom with separate tub and shower, and inbuilt wardrobes. Salient features include high perimeter wall, secure main gate, 24 seven security system, carbon paved driveway, ample parking area, well manicured gardens, standby backup generator for common areas, boho on site, waste treatment point, and street lighting. 
The estate has other amenities like an estate gym, a commercial center, recreational parks with a pub, a butchery, fast food joints, salons or barbershops, a clinic or laboratory, enough water storage facilities and an estate borehole. Price for the four-bedroom Michelet is 10.5 million Kenya shillings per unit. Price for the three-bedroom apartment is 6.5 million Kenya shillings per unit. Price for the two-bedroom apartment is 5 million Kenya shillings per unit. Gasemo Estate is a cluster housing project located 11.5 kilometers from Kitengela Town along Kitengela Namango Road. The project includes 24 units of three bedrooms for sale. Accommodation includes spacious living room, wide windows letting in a lot of natural light, fitted kitchen, visitors' cloakroom, two bedrooms with fitted wardrobes, and master bedroom ensuite. Salient features include high perimeter wall, carbro paved walkways, solar lighting systems, solar water heating systems, water tanks and borehole system, septic tanks and greenery. The price guide for the three bungalow apartment is 4.5 million Kenya shillings. As a return on investment, the price is 25,000 Kenya shillings per month. Visit our offices and view a wider selection of homes in every price range. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Book your seat today for our upcoming bus tour and get first-hand experience on these properties. See you next Sunday for another inspiring edition. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri! Mm -hmm.